next step in dealing with inverse functions is actually to find derivatives. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to find the derivative of an inverse function at a certain point. All right, first of all, we're going to actually find the derivative of an inverse function the old-fashioned way. Not that it's super old because you just learned it this year, but anyway, okay, here we go. Um, you'll notice that my function is the square root of x minus 3, and we would like to find, if you can see, we've got a little prime there, which means I'm going to be finding a derivative, and we've got this little negative 1 up here, which means we're going to be finding the derivative of an inverse. So we would like to find the derivative of the inverse of this function at x equals 4. So first thing that we'd like to do the old-fashioned way would actually be we're going to find the inverse. So step one would be to find the inverse. And then my second thing that I could do would be to take the derivative. So those are the steps that I'm going to follow in this problem. So to find the inverse, just like we did in a previous example, I am going to first of all call that y. So I'll have y equals the square root of x minus 3. Taking the inverse, we're going to switch the x and the y values. And then from here, we will solve for y, so I'll square both sides. I'll get x squared equals y minus 3. And then to solve for y, I'll just add 3 to both sides, so I'll get y equals x squared plus 3. So now I have found the inverse, so we're good to go. If I want to call it f inverse is x squared plus 3. And now it's said to actually we're going to find the derivative at a certain spot. So the next thing that we're going to do, so this was all step 1, then step 2, we could actually find the derivative of that inverse. The derivative of the inverse would be 2x, and this one said to find the derivative at x equals 4. So we could now plug in 4, and my answer would be 8. Alrighty. That works. The only trouble that we're going to run into this time is what if I have a function that looks like um, x squared minus 8x plus 4 or something like that. You'll notice when I want to switch the x and the y, I'm going to have x equals y squared minus 8y plus 4. We don't have a way to solve for y in this problem, so we would actually be stuck. So there has to be another way that I can find the derivative without actually finding the inverse. So that's what we're going to be looking at next. Right? So, to find the derivative of an inverse function without actually having to find the inverse function first is we are going to do 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. Okay? This is a formula. If you have memorized, all you'll need to do is to start plugging some things into it and finding the answer. So basically what we're going to be doing, our first step is going to be finding the inverse at our given point. And then our second step is going to be finding the, um, find the derivative of f at my new value. And hopefully I didn't confuse you anymore, but let's do some examples and then hopefully this will all make sense. All right, so the first thing, we're going to do this exact same problem a little differently. This time we're still going to find the derivative of the inverse at 4. The first thing that I do is I write the formula. So the formula that they gave me the, to find the derivative of an inverse with, was 1 over f prime of f inverse of the x value. In this case, the x value is 4. Okay, so now we want to find this first. The way that we are going to find this is asking me to find the inverse when x equals 4. Okay, If I'm looking at 4 being an x value on my inverse, I know that on my original function that would be my y value. So this is the x value on the inverse, which means it's the y value on the original function. So basically to find what that answer is, we're going to solve for x on this specific function. So we've got 4 equals the square root of x minus 3. I'm going to solve this for x. So I'm going to square both sides. So I'm going to get 16 equals x minus 3. And then I will add 3 to both sides. So I'm going to get x equals 19. Okay. Basically what I have just now found, I found that the inverse at x equals 4 is equal to 19. So now if I look at my formula, I have 1 over f prime of 19. Okay, my next step is to find the derivative of my original function at 19. So the next thing that I need to do is actually find the derivative of my original function. Okay, my original function is x minus 3. This is actually x minus 3 to the 1 half. 
And since I have parentheses, I'm actually going to do a u substitution. So um, I'm going to write over here f of x is actually equal to u to the 1 half. When I take the derivative of that, remember it's 1 half u to the negative 1 half times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. The derivative of what's inside of the parentheses is just 1. Okay, so if I go to rewrite this, I'm going to have 1 over 2. u to the negative 1 half would be really down below the square root of u, and u is x minus 3. Okay, so that's my derivative. I would like to find my derivative at 19. So if I have 1 over 2 square root of 19 minus 3, that will give me 1 over 2 square root of 16, and that will give me 1 over... 8 is my final answer for that one. So I have just found that this entire denominator is equal to 1 8. So notice my final answer is going to be 1 divided by 1 8. And if I rewrote that, that's actually going to be 1 times 8 over 1. And that answer is 8. Okay? You might be thinking, holy cow, that was a lot more work than the first slide. The more that you do this type of problem, the easier the problems will be. Plus, if we can't find the, an equation for the inverse, we have to do it this way. So that's why we just want to get set up so that we're comfortable and familiar with this method. All right, let's try another one and see if that makes a little bit more sense. All right, this time we've got a function, and we'd like to find the derivative, because of this prime here, of the inverse because of the negative 1. So first thing that I'm going to do is write the formula. 1 over f prime of f inverse of 3. Okay. So first thing that we want to do, again, we want to go inside here. We want to find the inverse at 3. And again, if the x value on the inverse is 3, that means that's the y value on the original function. So we are going to actually solve the original function for x. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. I'll get 8 equals x cubed. If I cube, cube root both sides, I'll get x equals 2. So we have just found that, that the inverse at 3 is equal to 2. Now my problem looks like 1 over f prime of 2. So my next step is to find, so my first step, this was my first step, step 1, right there. Step 2 is going to be to find the, to find the derivative of the original function at 2. So I'm going to go if f of x is equal to x cubed minus 5, the derivative of that function is 3x squared, and now we'll just find that derivative at 2. So if I plug 2 in, I will get 12. So we have now just found that this problem is equal to 12. And then my third step is just to finish it. I have 1 over what I just found, and that is 12. So that is the derivative of the inverse. And notice I didn't have to find the inverse in order to find that derivative. All right, let's try one more problem. We would like to find, again, the derivative of the inverse because of the prime and the inverse symbol for a equals 2. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and put that 2 in there. So the first thing that I would like to do again is I like to write my formula 1 over f prime and then f inverse at 2. Okay, so step 1 is going to be finding that inverse at 2. And again, if on the inverse this is my x value, on my original function that will be the y value. So I'm going to have 2 equals x cubed plus 2x minus 1. Okay, from here, we are going to let this be a calculator problem because there really is not a way for us to figure it out without our calculator. Um, what we are going to do, first of all, if I would like to figure this out on my calculator, I first of all would let it like it to say equals 0. So we're going to have 0 equals x cubed plus 2x minus 3. Okay, um, actually on this one, I nope, we cannot factor. I was thinking we could factor it, but there's a cubed, so it will not factor. It was only if it was a squared, it would factor. So the next thing that I would like to do is I can use the zero feature of my calculator, and I'm actually going to show you that step just in case you need it. So please grab your calculator out while I'm grabbing my calculator out. Okay, I am all set here. I believe we had x cubed, so x raised to the third power plus 2x plus 2x. And then we had minus 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph it. And then you'll notice we can see the 
um, graph touching the x-axis in one spot, so there's one zero. So to find that zero, even though I can kind of tell what it's going to be, we'll just double check it. We'll go to second calc again, and we'll look for zero. I notice that an x to the left of where it's crossing is zero, an x to the right of where it's crossing is three. I don't want to take a guess, and you'll notice that I got x equals one as my answer. So going back here, we have just found that x is equal to 1. So we have just found that that answer is 1. So my next thing is I've got 1 over f prime of 1, which means step 2, I actually want to find the derivative of my original function. The derivative of my original function would be 3x squared plus 2. And then if I find the, that derivative at 1, I would get 5. Okay, so now I've just found this whole denominator is equal to 5. So then my third step is just to do 1 over the answer that I just got, which was 5. So the derivative of the inverse at this spot would be 1 fifth. And again, notice that I would not have been able to find the inverse function first, so I would have to do this method to get it. So hopefully now you are somewhat familiar with finding the derivative of an inverse of a function.